Listening to the Open Bible Podcast. My name is Ethan Jones, and today I will be your host. As many of you know, this last weekend I had the privilege to come and meet with so many of you in Pinoca and visit and bring a word of encouragement from Scripture. And it was such a blessing to touch base and just hear of all that God's doing there. Thankfully, I also made it back to Karenport in one piece. The roads were quite treacherous. And to be quite honest, this trip was one of the most terrifying experiences of my life. At one point, I was ran off the road into a ditch by a distracted driver, and the roads were covered in ice, so even in the sections that were best, we had to drive at around 50 kilometers an hour, most of the way home. When I finally made it home, I also learned that the power was out, and it continued to stay out until this morning. Again, it has been a crazy experience that caused me to reflect and be humbled as well. There's really no reason that I didn't deserve to die yesterday. God owes me no favors. My hope to marry Katie in a couple of months is not something that God is obligated to fulfill. Having my family and friends around or them having me around for that matter, that is not something that I or them deserve. It is simply by the grace of God that I find my breath and to live. It is where I find any of the blessings in this life that God gives. As we read in James chapter 1 a couple of weeks ago, every good and perfect gift comes from God. So we should walk humbly and receive them as such gifts. And today we have a timely reminder in our passage in light of yesterday's experience. We get a call to humility before God and how we treat one another. So wherever you are today, I'd invite you to read or listen along with me to these great words from James chapter 2, verses 1 to 13. It says, My brothers, show no partiality as you hold the faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory. For if a man wearing a gold ring and fine clothing comes into your assembly, and a poor man in shabby clothing also comes in, if you pay attention to the one with fine clothing and say, you sit here in the good place, while you say to the poor man, you stand over here or sit down at my feet, have you not made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my beloved brothers. Has God not chosen those who are poor in the world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom, which he has promised to those who love him? But you have dishonored the poor man. Are not the rich the ones who oppress you and the ones who drag you into court? Are they not the ones who blaspheme the honorable name of which you were called? If you really fulfill the royal law according to scripture, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. You are doing well, but if you show partiality, you are committing sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors. Whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point has become guilty of it all. For he who has said, do not commit adultery, also said, do not murder. If you do not commit adultery but do murder, you become a transgressor of the law. So speak and so act as those who are judged under the law of liberty. For judgment is without mercy to those who have shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. Back when I was in middle school, I remember going to youth group and often they would play a video before the sermon, or rather a song called, You Are Not That Special. I'll play a quick clip from that song, but the lyrics have truly been ingrained into me and popped into my brain as I studied this passage. So here's a clip from the song. Hey kids, how many of you feel special? Well, I have a song for you. (laughs) You're not that special. (laughs) You're not that special. (laughs) You're not that special. And if you think you are, well, you're not. (laughs) 
there are hundreds of millions of children all over this big world. And that's just too many for you to try and count. Too many boys and girls. And if every one of them thinks that they are special too, well, that means that none of them are really special, <laughs> including you, you, and you. You're not that what a sweet reminder, isn't it? Seriously, though, we as fallen humans have it so ingrained in us to consider either ourselves or others more special or more worthy of honor than others. This is partiality. Someone cuts you off in traffic or maybe even runs you into a ditch. We say to ourselves, how could they? Or maybe if you're having a bad day, you'll even say, oh, I don't deserve this today. But not one person deserves anything but the wrath of God. Jeremiah 15 says, Those who are destined for death, death. And those who are for the sword, the sword. Those who are for famine, famine. And those who are for captivity, captivity. All of us who have disobeyed God's holy laws are deserving of eternal wrath. Yet while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son, as Romans 5 says. So none of us get what we deserve at the end of the day. Every breath is a gift. And we have a clear instruction given on how to use those breaths. Philippians 2 tells us to do nothing out of selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. And to draw from the words of the Apostle Paul, Galatians 3 tells us there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free, and there is no male or female, for you are all one in Christ. So if we follow a God who tells us that there is no distinction in his kingdom, that all are one, when we are told to treat others as more than ourselves, that means everyone. That means we walk this life humbly and we don't presume to be granted anything by God, but live with thanksgiving and expressing that through service to others without distinction, as he has done by saving for himself a people from all tribes and tongues, from every race, sex, and socioeconomic status, without distinction. If we are served in such an amazing way by our Savior, The way that we can show that is by loving others in the way that we have been loved. We are called to speak and so act as those who are being judged under the law of liberty. For judgment is without mercy to those who have shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. We are called to create no distinctions in the kingdom that God has not put there. And if we have received mercy that should translate into our lives. So take joy in the promises of God, that in Christ your sins are forgiven by grace through faith, but also work that faith out. This message makes very clear that if you show partiality, you are being disobedient to God and you are showing that you don't understand the grace that has been given to you. So keep watch that you don't create distinction in the kingdom that God does not make. But I also want you all to hear today. If you've committed the sin of partiality, there is grace for that. Christ's mercy is more than that. But be watchful, stay humble, and in all be thankful for the mercy of our Lord. As I record this, I'm baking bread in the kitchen, and the smell alone is stirring up a joy in the Lord for his providence in giving me food to eat. But even greater than that, we serve a God who chose us for salvation before we were born, even while we only deserved judgment and condemnation. The Lord chose us. He chose to have mercy on us. So take hold of that reality and let that transform your interactions with others today and this week as you go forward. Do not show partiality, but in all things have thanksgiving and show that in service to one another. Thank you for listening to the Open Bible Podcast. Our opening music today was Be Like You 
by Jonathan Ogden. And our closing music today is Instruments of Mercy by Beautiful Eulogy. Blessings on you all. The same God who measured the waters and the hollows of his holy hands Is the same God that uses broken man to expand his fixed plan Sovereign, infinite, eternal, personal, and intimate Independently playing the harp with the various parts of our heart's instrument Yeah, a symphony of saints saved from sin Singing spiritual songs, pausing in awe Where all praise and all applause belongs to God Stretching and bending, pitch pruning, tightening and toning Is the residue of his resin, that's the evidence of his divine choosing Using the weather and the storm to conform us into the image of our glorious Lore, scorned to compose the score, being stitched together in a melodious chord. It's the strumming and pressing of strings that momentarily stings, but in the end ultimately brings us to a place that causes hearts to sing. When I hold up my diploma, there's no dilemma despite my lack of credits Because Jesus paid it all, yeah, that's my story when they roll the credits A lifetime of suffering is nothing compared to the glory being prepared And we can never find a stairway to heaven or climb up a ladder to get there It's only by the merits of Christ that sinners inherit eternal life So I pray we grow in dependency, strip away my self-reliant tendencies Organize and order my days according to your ordinance I'm an instrument in your orchestra, Lord, and you are my only audience Holding your promises close and watching as your plan unfolds all for your glory and praise, playing the song that you composed. Yeah.